Okay, nakikita na ba yung slide? Anyone would like to say yes? Sir, na nakikita na po. Okay, thank you. So the Philippines in the 19th century as Rizal context. So part of the module one, so Rizal law, then we will discuss also the Philippines in the 19th century as Rizal context, no? So yung mga nakikita yung mga pictures yan, those are the different governor generals no, in the Philippines, assigned in the Philippines during the uh, 19th century or prior to 19th century. So probably yung topic natin pa na 19th century, no? So it started on 1800s, no? So those are the different generals, and dami nila. And later on, you will discover what is happening in the 19th century, no? Nung panahon ni Rizal, nung bata siya, hanggang naging binata, hanggang mamatay siya, okay? The Philippines in the 19th century, as for some context, of course, it's something to do with Spanish colonization. So the 19th century timeline of the Philippine history, so these are the part of our discussion. And then under economic history is the end of the Gallian trade, the opening of the Suez Canal and the world trades, the rise and of the export crop economy and monopolies. And then we'll discuss about the social history. Under social history, the birth of the middle classes, the Chinese mestizo, the Inquilinos, and then the intra-clergy conflicts and the Kabuti mutiny. And then the political history about something to do with liberalism and the impact of the Bourbon reforms and the Cadiz uh, Constitution. But as regard to political history, hindi tayo mag elaborate doon, no? Kasi uh, in my readings, wala naman talagang masyadong nangyari. Particularly the in, yung Bourbon reform, no? It, somehow, hindi naman binago yung Constitution or yung mga batas sa Pilipinas. And same thing with the Cadiz, uh, Cadiz Constitution. So, Ito yung mga nangyayari, or rather, hindi pa na nangyayari. This is what happened in the 19th century. So as assessed by writers or authors, so there are many Spanish misrules and abuses. One of their assessment, merong instability of colonial administration. Gaya ng sinabi ko kanina, no? Ang daming governor general na nasa sa Pilipinas. In a year, dalawa, tatlo. So, mabilis yung ano, pagbabago. No? And then, of course, there are corrupt officials. Hindi lahat naging uh, maganda yung layunin nila. And then, there are no representation in Spanish Cortes. Yung mga Pilipino, they cannot represent in the Spanish court. Even uh, in... <clears throat> in our history that the Philippines became province of Spain, no? Human rights of Filipinos were denied, no? Isa sa mga hindi magagandang nangyayari. No equality before the law, okay? Parang yung batas ginawa lang para sa kanila, not for the Filipinos. And there are a lot of injustices. Of course, racial discrimination it was experienced. And then there is what we call the pre-locracy. What does it mean by pre-locracy? Gusto nila sila yung parang at the top or sila yung uh, parang governor general or equal yung power nila with the governor general. And in the 19th century, dun din nangyari yung forced labor. No? And prior owning asyendas, dumalawak din sila, particularly the Dominican owned asyenda. And then, of course, the authority or what we call the abuses of the Guardia Civil. So somehow all these things happen during the time of Rizal from, uh, from the birth of Rizal until he became uh, an adult, no? Okay? So as you can see on, the, on my left side, we have the name of the different governor general, no? Pero it does not mean na uh, kailangan tandaan natin lahat yan. Yung mga naka-highlight lang, no? Kung titignan ninyo, Tignan nyo, Mariano Fernandez de Polgueras, 1806-1810. Tapos, after three years, pinanitan si Manuel Gonzalez. And then, hindi pa natapos yung term niya, no? pinanitan na siya ni Jose Gardoki. And then, naulit si Mariano Polgueras, no? And then, so, you will examine na lang, no, by yourself para hindi tayo masyadong mag-consume ng time. Okay, so this is what happened. So, we'll start our discussion in 1805. So, nagsimula noong 1805, of course, prior to that, 
meron na mga nagre-revolt, no? And one of these is what we call the Nueva Vizcaya Revolt. 1907, about the revolt of Abaristo. We will not elaborate them, no? So we just want to know what, what happened, no? 1811, the last state galleon left Manila for Mexico. 1813, Spain ended the galleon trade. So nawala na yung galleon trade in 1813. 1815, the last state galleon left Acapulco for Manila. No? So dati, dati kasi connected tayo sa Mexico, sa Puerto Rico. So those are the uh, colonial ano ng, ano, Spain, no? Ito, uh, territory. 1821, the Philippines uh, uh, was declared as a province of Spain. No? So naging probinsya tayo ng Spanya noong 1821. 1823, nagkaroon ng re rebellion of Andres Novales. As I mentioned, hindi na natin elaborate. In 1934, the Royal Decree official opened Manila to world trade. So nagsisimula na yung ano, progress sa Philippines. So, so probably that is on September 6, 1834. 1837, Manila officially opened to the world commerce. 1849, Governor General Narciso Claveria E. Zaldua issued the Claverian degree o yung Catalogo Alphabetico de Apellidos. <coughs> ano ba to? Actually, prior to 1849, meron ng parang batas that all the people dwell or settled in the Philippines must change their surname into Spanish surname. Kaya tingnan yung mga apelido natin. Particularly in Zon, no? So they are all Spanish surname. Like my surname, Perez. Kanina may nakikita ko, Garcia. Ano pa? So, there are a lot of Spanish surname, no? David. Those are Spanish surname. De Guzman. De La Cruz. So, Del Rosario. De Jesus. Okay? So, there, so the reason why our surname are, became like that, no? Became Spanish surname, dahil nga nagkaroon ng parang decree or batas, no? So, tapos... In organization, or parang to come up into a census, ginawa ni Governor General Sisa Claveria Isaldua, or what we call the Calabrian degree, it came up into a catalog alphabetico de apellidos. Okay? Parang nagkaroon ng record. So even in the 1849, they already know how to come up into a document. No? Meron ng mga documentation. Kaya, kaya may ano tayo, no? May alam tayo kung ano nangyari sa nakaraan. Okay, to continue, I hope it makes sense. No? Yan si Governor Claveria, one of the Governor General no, in the Philippines. Now, as regard to our eco economy, economic history, so one of the something remarkable happened in the Philippines no, is the opening of the Philippines to world trade commerce. Bakit ano ba naging impact nito or pagbabago Okay, in 1815, the last galleon, uh, galleon arrived in Manila. So, yung galleon na to, nagta-travel siya from Manila to Acapulco, no? in Mexico or Mexico. 1834, Manila officially opened to the world commerce. And then, there's the rise of haciendas and the cash crop economy. What is this cash crop economy? No, uso na yung ano. Dati kasi hacienda, no? there is what we call the landlord and the haciendero. Now, in the cash crop economy, yung mga Chinese to, no? Uh, meron na nagpapautang. So, and then, meron ng sanglang bigay na tinatawag na pacto de, pacto de ret, uh, retro de pacto, no? There's like that. And then, there is an expansion of export products in Europe to the West Canal. And then, the Philippines became a major exporter. So, we progressed, no? That time. So the Philippines is considered as the number one exporter of sugar, tobacco, coffee, and abaca, and became known in other parts of the world, not only in Puerto Rico or Mexico. 1834 to 1873, different ports were opened. No? So mga, ano yan, mga port. So one in Suwal, in Mangasinan, and then in Iloilo, Sambuanga, Cebu, and Legazpi. Okay, to continue... So what's the effects of the economy in the Philippines? So this is what happened in the 19th century, no? 
First, the Filipinos' life prospered due to the vigorous economic activity in the colony. So kung titignan natin, yung colonization, hindi naman sa masama. No? Of course, there are abuses. But in somehow, hindi naman, lahat, hindi naman lahat nag-suffer. So yun nga, may, may umaman, okay, o gumanda yung buhay nila. Some of our, some of the Filipino, no? And then, <clears throat> another advantage in our economy during that time, nagkaroon ng modern methods of agriculture were introduced at time. Then, the means of transportation and communication improved, no? So, in history, minsan napaka-negative yung tinuturo nila as regard to colonization, no? Of course, may mga hindi maganda, but hindi naman puro hindi maganda, no? Meron din nangyaring maganda. Like, what happened now? Kung hindi tayo sinakop ng mga Kastila, probably we don't have any religion, no? O baka Muslim lahat yung Pilipinas, uh, Muslim yung Pilipinas, no? Hindi sa Christian. And then, hindi na-develop ng infrastructure, no? And, one thing na nangyari then during the 19th century, there is the emergence of the middle class. No, nagkaroon na ng class system, no? Social classes. And more Filipinos able to study in Europe. See? So, hindi naman ganun kahigpit that time. Rizal was one of those Filipino students who earns degree in Universidad Central de Madrid. Same thing with Antonio Luna, no? And its brother, Juan Luna. And other, other uh, Filipino, Marcelo H. de Rafilar, they all studied in Europe. And they are privileged because the time, the Philippines, it's a province of Spain, so probably pag pumunta ka ng Europe, parang citizen ka rin. <clears throat> parang ano ka rin, no? One of them. You are, some of parang European then, no? And, during the time, they acquired material wealth and improved their social life. So, so, nagkaroon ng progress, no? Uh, are you are not wondering or questioning bakit after 300 years, no, kasi nag simula yung Span Spaniard in 15 something, no, 1521, and then nagkaroon lang ng pag aklas or revolution after 300 years. Or what I mean, yung parang ayaw na natin sa kanila. Di ba kayo nagtataka bakit kaya after 300 years, dun pa lang nagkaroon ng revolusyon or something na we we are uh, what do you call this one? We are demanding for our freedom. No? Bakit after 300 years lang nangyari? Bakit hindi nung 60 years, 100 years, but, but 300 years? Okay? Later you will, ano, no? After our discussion, we balikan natin yung question na yun. Maybe some of you have any ideas why? So as regard to social history, you know, so yung social classes, yung birth of the middle class. So in the 19th century Philippines, there are five social classes in the Philippines. We have the peninsulares, the referring to the Spaniard born in Spain. So yung mga pure Spanish sila, but they went in the Philippines and they didn't and settle. So we call them peninsulares. And then we have the insulares. These are the Spaniards born in the Philippines. No? So, ibig sabihin, yung mga Spanish na tumira sa Pilipinas, nagkapamilya sila si dito, yung anak nilang pinanganak dito sa Pilipinas, tinatawag natin insulares. So, in our history, kung nakikita yung ma-equal Filipino, sila yung unang kinilalang Filipino. <clears throat> no? Hindi, hindi yung mga Indio. They are the first being considered as Filipino, yung mga insulares, creoles, and so on, no? Meron mga mga creol, no? Mga creoles, o creoles. And then, we have the middle class. And who are the middle class? These are the Spanish mestizo, or the mestizo de Espanol. And then, the principalia. And the Chinese mestizo, or the mestizo de sangle. Imagine, no? Kasama yung mga Chinese. The Chinese mestizo, or mestizo de sangle. Okay, are you aware during the 19th century, the population of the Spanish people settled in the Philippines are somehow uh, more than, no, or maybe twice as many as the 
population of the Spaniard. Kaya naging threat sila somehow, no? <clears throat> okay. So, of course, we have the Chinese, the original Chinese, no? They are the people from China that migrated in the Philippines. So, matagal nang may Chinese sa Pilipinas, no? Kaya, kaya merong binondo, no? <clears throat> and then we have the Indio. The Indio are the Malayan inhabitant in the archipelago. And later on, the Indio are, are considered as the Filipino. And Rizal himself, he claims, he claims that he is an Indio, no? Okay, to continue. <clears throat> So, tribute system, parang tax, pero hindi tax, no? Okay. So, tribute system, pag sinabi natin tribute system, yung parang nagbabayad ka sa gobyerno, pero hindi tax to, no? Hindi pa tinatawag na tax, or hindi pa ito yung sedula. So, as you can see, yung hierarchy, ayan siya, no? Na yung pinakamataas sa social class, yung mga peninsulares, sinunod sila ng insulares, and then the sangle, the Chinese mestizo, and the Filipino mestizo, and then the Indio and the Chinese. So, tignan yung social class, nasa pinakamababang antas yung mga Chinese. And during that time, no, uh, merong parang, what do you call this one? If we, we can say that is uh, discrimination or, yes, maybe we can say that is discrimination. Ayaw ng mga Indio na matawag silang Chinese. Uh Oo. -oh. Are you aware when Rizal was executed, it, it was considered him as a Chinese. Pero it cross out the word Chinese, it replaces into Indio. But originally, or yung pagkatao talaga ni Rizal is Chinese. Alam nyo bang national hero natin, Chinese siya, no? Of course, we will elaborate that in, in module 2. So what about this tribute system? So, ito yung ano natin, legend natin. Non-paying tributes. Peninsulares, insulares. O bakit sila, hindi sila nagbabayad, no? So, yung batas talaga, in walang equality. And then, pay the highest tribute are the Chinese mestizo and the Filipino mestizo and the Chinese. Imagine, no? So, privileged naman, privileged naman yung mga Indio kasi they paid the lowest tribute. Okay? Pero, as you can see, yung mga peninsulares and insulares, you need the time, hindi sila nagbibigay ng tribute. Okay? Continue? So, <clears throat> to augment our discussion as regard to the social history, so who are the peninsulares? No? They are the highest class in the Philippines and trusted with the offices of high rank. Peninsulares are pure-blooded Spaniard born from Spain and sent to and settled or sent to Spanish colonies to govern, not only in the Philippines. So probably the term peninsulares uh, is used on the different uh, country being colonized by Spain, no? Hindi lang sa Pilipinas, sinabawa, sa Mexico, sa Puerto Rico, no? Sa Ampaba, no? Those are some of the uh, countries being colonized by Spain. And then we have the insulares. They are ranked below the peninsulares. The insulares... Sometimes they are called as Creole or Creolos, no? Are of European descent but born in the colonies of Spain. So, lahat ng pinanganak sa kolo, kolo, uh, colony ng Spain, Philippines, Mexico, Puerto Rico, and the other colony, yung mga Spanish na nagkaroon ng anak doon, or Spaniard rather, na nagkaroon ng anak doon, tinatawag silang insulares or Creolos, no? Eventually, they may have been intermarrying with Filipinos or other races here in the country. That was the time na nagkaroon ng mga mestizo. So the mestizo are referring to the, what we call, anak ng mga pure blood Spaniard and then the, yung kanyang wife or yung husband ay Filipino or Filipina or Chinese siya, no? So that's, <clears throat> kaya meron din natin tinatawag ng mga mestizo. To continue. And one of the mestizos are the mestizo de Espanol. Who are these mestizo de Espanol? They are offspring of Spanish people interbreeding with Filipinos. So tawag sa mga uh, anak ng Pilipina at ng Castila o ng Spaniard ay mestizo de Espanol. Mestizo is a term given to the individuals inheriting foreign ancestry, no? 
they may or may not have European or other racial feature despite popular belief. Originally, the term was used in Latin America but was later adapted here in the country to children of racial intermarriage. So can we still do, use the word mestizo? Sa ngayon, oo, oh, pwede, no? Actually, tayo, I think we are all mestizo. Kasi hindi na tayo pure blood Filipinos. Kasi meron ng other ano, uh, blood na nag sa atin. And, and with and we refer to our descendants, pwede may ano tayo, uh, meron tayong Spanish ano, ancestor, no? Kaya pwede tayo, we can say that we are Filipino mestizo, no? But the term was not used anymore, no? And then, the mestizo de sangle, no? Hindi yung pagkain yan, yung sangle, no? Alam nyo yun? Sa kapampangan? Hindi yan, no? Mestizo de sangle, not all mestizo are indexed or coming from Europeans. A mestizo, a person of Filipino or an interracial descent marrying a Chinese, <clears throat> the result... Is, uh, the result is children that will be called mestizo de sangre. So lahat ng mga Pilipino na nakapag-asawa ng Chinese, ang tawag sa kanila ay mestizo de sangre. So probably we can say Rizal is a mestizo de sangre. Bakit? Kasi yung ancestor ni Rizal, yung si Domingo Lamco, Chinese. And then si Enes de la Rosa, a Pilipina. So yun ang naging wife niya, no? And then nagkaanak sila. And then one of the sons was the father of Rizal. No? So probably, yung father ni Rizal, mestizo de sangre siya. So Rizal, father, as a mestizo de sangre, nag ng Pilipina. So ganun pa rin, no? He's a mestizo de sangre. Then, there's also what we call the inquilinos. Yun na, yung crop system, no? <clears throat> the inquilinos, sino ba sila? These are Chinese, no? Yung mga Chinese, when they are in, now in the Philippines, their business, it's more on uh, pagtitinda, trade, or barter, but not into farming. But later on in the 19th century, they engage their business or somehow they change their paradigm into, a, into another business, which what we call yung farming. Pero hindi sila yung nagpa-farm. Anong ginagawa nila? Sila yung nagpapautang. No? Particular in central zones. No? Dito sa atin. No? Tinatawag yun na pacto de retro. So what is this pacto de retro? Yun yung they found the land or then later on in, in, pag, sa pagsanglanin na ng lupa hindi natubos ng magsasaka nagiging sanglang bigay siya. So that is pacto de retro. Ah, de retro. Sorry, no? And the one who manage are the inquilinos. So, tinawag yung mga Chinese na who are into farming as inquilinos. Okay? Don't be confused with the term, no? And then, of course, there's what we call the tornatras. No? Pero hindi sila masyadong napansin, no? Sino ba sila? It's an old Spanish term for a person of mixed ancestry from Spanish, Filipino, and Chinese, pero parang mestizo rin, no? Like, uh, okay, maybe <clears throat> mas appropriate na sabihin natin na si Rizal ay tornata or tornatras, no? Bakit? Kasi si Rizal, ancestors, meron Spanish, Chinese, Japanese, and then Filipino. So those are the different nationality or races, no? Na ancestor na Riz ni Rizal. So probably we can say Rizal, uh, as regard to social history, its class, it's belong to Tornatra or Tornatras. Okay? But during the time of Rizal, they were became known as the Ilustrados. Who are the Ilustrados? No, ayan, yung nakikita yung picture na yan. So, yan ang mga Ilustrados. <clears throat> And usually, mga Pilipino yan na nasa Europe. No? And mga nasa upper class, yung mga mayayaman. So, illustrados so somehow exist or existed during the 19th century. No? 19th century. So, illustrados means enlightenment or the intellectuals. And who are they? We have Rizal, Marcelo H. Del Pilar, <coughs> um, <coughs> 
Apolinario Mabini, Juan Luna, Antonio Luna, okay, sino pa ba? Jose Basa. So those are what we call the illustrados, no? To continue. So again, may changes na naman, no? In 1859, April 14, so probably this is the founding of the Jesuit community, no? April 14, 1859, 10 Spanish Jesuits arrived in Manila. And that's the founding of Escuela Pia, or what we called uh, Escuela, Pia, Escuela Pia Municipal de Manila. Escuela Pia School for Charity. That's the former name or the original name of Ateneo de Manila. From Escuela Pia Municipal de Manila, naging ano siya, Ateneo de Municipal in Intramuros. So the original site of Ateneo was not in Quezon City. Wala, hindi sa Katipunan, no? Kung hindi, nandun siya sa ano, Intramuros. Pero ngayon, wala na, no? Nasa Katipunan na siya. All the big school, as, ah, rather, not all pala. Nasa Manila, Intramuros pa rin pala yung iba, like UST, no? Ay, UST, Manila, sorry. Okay? So, dyan nakapag nag-aral si Rizal, no? 1859. And 1861, June 19, that was the time where Rizal was born. So, sabi nga nila, national hero was born. Alam kaya ni Rizal na magiging national hero siya. So, anong sa palagay ninyo? Okay? 1863, December 30, Jose de la Concha, Minister of Colonies, promulgated the Education Decree of 1863, which established the public education system and normal school for men. No, <clears throat> so 1863 very ano siya, very very significant siya. No, uh, why? Una yun nga nagkaroon na ng educational decree, may batas na para makapag-aral yung mga lalaki. No, particularly in Europe sa yung mga pinadadala lang sa Europe, Europa na makapag-aral ay mga lalaki, walang babae. But, <clears throat> but during the time of Rizal, uh, women con can also uh, study, no? pero only for those who are mestizos or belong in the upper class. 1863, meron din mag mag uh, parang hindi makakalimutan kasaysayan na nangyari sa Pilipinas. And that's the Great Earthquake, no? 1863, the Great Earthquake. So probably ito yung sa kasalukuyan, ito yung tinasabi natin, the big one. So this Great Earthquake damaged Manila City and Cathedral. So there are 2,000 victims and sad to say, this is also the death of Padre Pedro Pelaez, a Creole Pinotino priest who is the leader of the secularization of the process. Later on, we'll talk about Padre Pedro Rod uh, Pelaez, no? Okay, so 1863. 1869, March 22, Governor Carlos Maria de la Torre was sent in the Philippines. And I think this is one of the best governor general being assigned in the Philippines. Bakit? In his two years of service, imagine two years lang siya. But bakit kaya naging two years lang siya? I think tinanggal na after two years. Bakit? In two years of service, the Philippines enjoyed certain liberal concession, no? Freedom of press, Filipinization of the process, sinuport niya yung kay Padre Pedro Pelaez, freedom to propose or reform. And this is the time wherein Emilio Aguinaldo was born, no? March 22, 1869. So one of the best governor general being assigned, no? Parang pro-Filipino siya, ay si Governor Carlos Maria de la Torre. Kasi maganda yung kanyang ano, yung kanyang parang rep, uh, reforma, no? Or what we call yung kanyang platform, no? Yung freedom of press, Filipinization of, Filip, Filipinization of the Farces, ano bang ibig sabihin ng Filipinization of the Farces? Yung mamumuno, mga Pilipinong pari, no? Freedom to propose reform na pwedeng mag-suggest kung anong gustong pagbabago, okay? So, moving on. Okay, so sino pa si Padre Pedro Pelaez? Padre Pedro Pelaez was born on June 29, 1812 in Pangasinan. Ay, sorry, Pangasinan na mention ko. Sorry, medyo siguro <coughs> gutom na, no? Okay. Was born in Pagsanhan, sorry, Laguna, no? 
So to Don Jose Pelais Rubio, and then no, a native of Prince, uh, Principado de uh, Asturias, Spain, Spain, and governor of Laguna Province. And then to Doña Josepa Sebastian Gomez de Sada, native of Manila or Philippines. Father Francisco Villegas is the one who baptized Padre Pelaez and then Pedro Alcantara is the Godfather. In 1817, a per, per, or rather, uh, he had the sacrament of confirmation. Naging nino niya si Don Manuel de los Reyes. Okay? 1823, he studied at Dominican School of Santo Tomas, Latin, Grammar, Rhetoric, Philosophy, and Sacred Theology. In 1826, he pursued a degree in Art, Philosophy, like Logic, Physics, and Metaphysics. In 1829, February 19, he received his Bachelor degree. <coughs> Sorry. 1833, January 21, pursued a four-year course leading to Bachelor degree in Theology. So, <coughs> nemine discrepante, no? Or... <coughs> 1835, he passed the competitive examination for faculty of full professor in the philosophy department of the Real Coleo de San Jose. December 5, 1836, obtained the degree of licensing in theology, taught, taught Latin, grammar, philosophy, and so on at Coleo de San Tomas. No? 1837, was ordained priest by Archbishop of Manila, Jose Segui. So, naging priest siya 1837. In 1837, September, uh, second in the list to sit in Manila, Cabildo. Well, that means magkaroon siya ng position, no? 1839, obtained a seat in Manila, Cabildo, and leave its position as faculty chair in Coleo de San Jose. So, yan, no? So, nagkaroon na na siya ng chance para mamuno. <clears throat> 1839, he was appointed as Sub-delegate judge of Manila Diocese by Bishop of Nevas Caceres, Juan Antonio de Lilo. And 1844, obtained his doctorate degree. And then 1836 to 1862, became part of the faculty of the University of Santo Tomas. <clears throat> of course, these are some of its background. But the very uh, reason bakit nasama dito si Padre Pedro Pelaez because he is the leader of the secularization of the Philippine parishes or the Philippinization of the of the parishes. Siya yung nagpasimuno o nag, <coughs> nagsimula or nag uh, propose na lahat ng simbahan sa Pilipinas dapat ang mamuno ay mga Pilipinong pari. Of course, ayaw yan ng mga Kastilang pari. Kaya kaya yun ayaw nila, no? Sa, ayaw nila sa kanya and then of course, there is also politics in the church, no? May politika rin sa simbahan. Kung sa, sa state may politics, even in the church, there is a politics. Okay, to continue. So, <clears throat> ito, significant yan. Si Rafael Descuerdo y Gutierrez, no? 1872, so naging governor general sa Pilipinas, 1871 to 1873. But being the governor... Of the, of the Philippines the time in 1872 in our history, this one is considered as what we call one of the revolution, no? Yung Cavite Mutiny. In January 20, uh, there are what we call 200 Filipinos and mestizo workers rose in mutiny against kay Don Rafael Escuerdo or Governor Rafael Escuerdo. 1872, February 17, this is, uh, this is also very significant because this is the martyrdom of the three Filipino priests, Gombursa, Padre Jose Burgos, Mariano Gomez, Asinto Zamora. <clears throat> I will not elaborate them no, uh, with this because later on in the module 2, mami mention din sila and the mother of Rizal, na ano siya, na kunong siya, no? Okay? I will not elaborate this one and then, kasi, as I mentioned, we will discuss them in Module 2. So, uh, inaano lang natin mga significant thing na nangyari. No? 1874, si Rizal, sumunod siya po, may primera inspiration. 1877, he graduated the highest of pride of the Jesuit. <coughs> then he pursued, uh, I will not elaborate this. Okay. So, these are some of the things that happened. No? Rizal Literary Work, yung mga sinunod niya sa UST, and then in Madrid, nakasulat siya yung Amor Patrio. 
And then, of course, um, eight, uh, June 24, 1884, uh, Rizal was invited because of the two Filipino artists, Juan Luna and Penix Reflection Hidalgo. They won the National Exposition of Fine Art in Madrid, no? Eighteen eighty four tribute and full tax were abolished, and the use of cedula personal was introduced. So the cedula practice in the Philippines was introduced in eighteen eighty four. In eighteen eighty five, Rizal obtained his licenciado de Policía y Letras in Universidad Central de Madrid. Eighteen eighty six, Rizal went in Heidelberg, Germany, and so on to practice its uh, its uh, profession, being an ophthalmologist. <clears throat> eighteen eighty seven, that was the time where Rizal finished writing his novel Noli Me Tangere. 1887, after five years of sojourn, Rizal went in the Philippines, no? And the Governor General at that time was Governor, Gen uh, uh, Governor General Emilio Terrero. And 1887 in Singapore, uh, of course, Padre Vicente Garcia <clears throat> uh, used the surname Uso de Siderio Maglalang to defend Rizal against the allegation of Padre Rodriguez. 1888, Rizal arrived in Liverpool, England. That was the time when he annotated the what we call yung success of the Les Filipinas. 1888, in British Museum, that's the annotation. 1889, Rosario Lopez founded the Patriotic Newspaper La Solidaridad, no? So the official newspaper of the <coughs> organization, Circula La Solidaridad. 1889, Paris France Rizal witnessed the Universal Exposition and founded the Kidla Club in Los Bravos, Eredelson de los Malayos. I will not elaborate those now because we will again tackle them in, in what we call Moju 2. <clears throat> 1889, that was the time where Rizal contributed the Sobre la Indonesia Filipinos in art in what we call the Solidaridad. And then 1890, in the Breve Garnier Hermanos, he printed his third book, Yung Morgan Success de las Filipinas. 1890, Madrid Rizal called the Minister of Colonies to complain against the allegation or rather to complain against the uh, injustice committed by Valeriano Baylor. <clears throat> 1891 Rizal arrived in Hong Kong and then that was the first time that he met Dr. Lorenzo P. Marquez, became its mentor. And then 1892 something to do with Borneo condensation. 1892 Rizal was arrested and incarcerated in Fort Santiago. <clears throat> and then 1893, in, in what we call the Pitan, Rizal was exiled, and then he met Pablo Mercado. 1895, Rizal offered himself as a medical doctor or military doctor in Cuba. 1896, Padre Pio, a uh, doctor, sorry, Dr. Pio Valenzuela, a ministry of Andres Bonifacio, so the advice of Rizal, no? so those are the things that happen, no? but I will not elaborate them anymore because in module two, we will tackle them again. No? 1896, Isla de arrived in Barcelona. That was the time where in Rizal hoping that he will be in Cuba. No? 1896, Rizal was accused as the principal organizer and even sold the Philippine insurrection by Governor, Gen uh, Governor General Camilo de Falabella. December 15, 1896, result a manifesto to the Filipino. That was the time where he appealed to stop the necessary uh, shedding of blood under the leadership of what we called Andres Bonifacio. <clears throat> December 28, 1886, Polivia approved the decision of the uh, court martial and ordered the result to be shot at 7 o'clock in the morning on December 30 at Bagong Bayan. No? December 29, after Rafael de Rodriguez with the death sentence of Rizal, 7 a.m., Father Miguel Siddhartha Mata and Father Luis visited Rizal. Father Visa brought the Sacred Heart of Rizal, December 30, 1896, that marched to Bayan. <clears throat> and then Dr. Felipe Ruiz Castillo examined Rizal's pulse and found to be normal. At 7.30 a.m., December 30, 1896, Rizal died at the age of 35, 5 months and 11 days. Okay? <clears throat> so that is what happened no, in 189. So under the political history, such as liberalism in fact of Bourbon reform and Kansas condition, for this topic, so so probably I will not elaborate them, but you have to search on Google or any platform. Okay, to end my discussion, time goes fast, so you need to cherish every seconds of your life. Tama, no? 
So probably, yan ang magandang dapat gawin natin. Parang ano yan? Carpe diem. So what do you mean by carpe diem? Seize the day. So try to find any meaningful or something beautiful in every day you live. According to Rene Descartes, no? carpe diem. Four times, four time goes past. So you need to cherish every seconds of your life. Thank you. Okay, I will stop share screen so that you have question. I stop also 